Joining us today to talk more about this is Sam Batkins, author of the article here you see titled, The Consumer Price of Regulation, the Director of Regulatory Policy at American Action. Welcome to America's Forum. It's good to have you with us. Oh, thanks for having me. Well, Sam, so let's talk about this a little bit more. Before we get into specific areas of price increases, tell us what factors went into your study and how many new regulations we're talking about coming under the last six years of the Obama administration. Sure. We only looked at uh, a few dozen regulations, actually 36. And from those 36 regulations, uh, they estimated, so these are government estimates, the cost increase that would be passed on to consumers from everything from your mortgage payment to uh, they were very upfront about cars, for example, uh, roughly $3,000 when you add up one layer of fuel efficiency standard after another, uh, piled on with a few other regs, and all of a sudden you're talking about $3,000. And I think there's often this perception that companies pay the cost of regulation, but uh, often these costs are passed on to consumers, and it's, uh, it's individuals who are paying these regulatory costs. I mean, often, more often than not, maybe almost always, those prices are always passed on to the consumers here. And we're taking a look at this very closely. Uh, vehicle surprising, maybe, uh, but we also hear President Obama highlighting this, uh, fuel efficiency, uh, talking about savings America's money. I is he confused or just trying to spin this? Well, I mean, it, it depends on uh, what kind of car you purchase and how long you keep it. Uh, what we're seeing a lot of, and I mentioned in our research, is because cars are going to be $3,000 more expensive, uh, generally you're going to get fewer auto sales, which will obviously have an impact on, on the economy and the manufacturing industry. And because cars are more expensive, people are going to delay purchase of that new automobile and keep on using their older uh, used car, which also has an effect on the used market. So, yes, if... if, if if you buy a new car and you happen to keep it for, for 10 to 15 years, then you might see some savings, but you're going to pay that, that $3,000 premium up front. Now, here's something I, I saw in the whole story here. It said consumer price increased by more than $11,000 for the typical consumer. Do us a favor here. Just give us an idea of what that typical consumer is, because I'll bet there's a lot of people out there already going, I'm not so sure if I'm typical. Well, I mean, so you would, you would have to purchase, purchase, uh, purchase a car, uh, if you purchased a dishwasher, uh, refrigeration equipment, a clothes washer, light bulb, something we all purchase. But, you know, those are individual factors, but there are also some broader. We all consume electricity, and we found for electricity costs, those would go up by more than, by more than um, $135 annually. If you have a mortgage, that's several hundred dollars annually. You're going to be paying for higher mortgage costs, uh, health care, food. Uh, there's just one EPA regulation that came out recently that admitted uh, $10 and higher food prices per person per year. And that's just from one regulation that they admitted uh, would increase food prices. There's something else here, too, and I wanted you to address this, because as the report comes out now, of course, the administration, as anybody else, they'll spin as best as they can. There was a discussion here from Emily Kane. She was a spokeswoman for the Office of Management and Budget. And she said, and I quote, we have not, read, uh, not yet reviewed this American Action Forum report, so we don't know if it is as deeply flawed and misleading as some of the group's previous reports. i got to tell you, Sam, that's a shot right across the jaw. Well, uh, if it's flawed and misleading, it's only because uh, the estimates from uh, the administration are flawed and misleading as well, because we use all of their uh, estimates uh, in our figures. So, uh, you know, to the extent that it's, it's misleading, that's, that's on their basis. But everyone acknowledges, you know, EPA acknowledges, National Highway Transportation Safety Administration, HHS, all of these agencies acknowledge that these costs have to be borne by someone, and more often than not, they're eventually borne by the consumer. Well, Sam, let's talk about how these regulatory costs can impact all of our power bills, a key factor that everybody has to deal with. It, the rough winter we just went through, higher costs, of course, impacting everybody as well. But we're also hearing uh, the Obama administration talking about pushing forward uh, with executive orders that are similar uh, to cap and trade uh, regulation. How is this going to impact as you look ahead to what the average American's power bill looks like? Well, I do think that EPA will, will do some sort of analysis in terms of what these new power plant, greenhouse gas power plant regulations mean for consumers. Um, you, for their last big regulation, which was known as Utility Mac, which was recently uh, battled out in court, you know, they said roughly 3% uh, higher prices, but they s sort of 
hedged and said, well, you know, that's sort of with the normal fluctuation. So I, I think that, you know, on Monday morning you can expect sort of the, the, a similar type of analysis, but, uh, you know, it all depend on the specifics of the plan. Yeah, many states are saying that, you know, if the Obama administration, the EPA does go through with this, it will force power, pan, pl power plants uh, to close down. Do you think that's a likely scenario, or are we just hearing uh, the worst case scenario uh, from the, maybe the coal industry? Well, I, I think the extent of the plant closures will again depend on specifics, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't at all doubt that you will see announcements in the coming year or two once this regulation is finalized of additional coal plant retirements. Um, that's something that agencies have admitted throughout the past few years that you will see retirements. I don't know that they've that they forecasted where we're at now, which is which is well over 100 coal retirements. Um, but uh, you know, I, I think that's definitely in the cards. All right. What about let's. One last thing with about 30 seconds we have left here. I want to make sure we talk sure. about the mortgage costs here, the rising costs in mortgages, how that impacts the economy, and how this impacts the report. Sure. Well, I mean, you know, $362 is a lot of money uh, to, to a lot of people, and, you know, it just makes it that much more difficult uh, to become uh, to become a home buyer, and uh, it certainly adds on to that $11,000 figure that we, uh, that we estimated. Sam, it's a pretty bleak picture you're painting there for a lot of consumers. I'm sorry to be the bearer of bad news. <laughs> yeah, well, well, we won't shoot the messenger today. You're, you're not, no, you're, you're just the messenger. Yeah. You're not the bearer. You're just taking the numbers and making sense of them. That's all. Yes. All right, yes. Sam Backhands, Director of Regulatory Policy for American Action Forum. Great to talk to you, Sam. All right, thanks so much. Take care. All right. Well, you know, you'd like to think that based on what happened in 2008, you could have some sensible common sense regulation without it costing a lot of Americans money. Is this a problem of the regulation itself or the way it's being implemented? I just you use common sense in there somewhere. That's all. I just want to make sure that we, we use that a little more often because maybe, that seems to be the two most missed words. Well, I don't know. Maybe you, to avoid a run in the banks like we had in 2008 as a relation to the mortgage industry, we'd like to prevent that, wouldn't exactly. we? All right. Exactly. All right. Ed Berliner, good to see you. We'll be back we'll with be more back. here on America's Forum. Of course, you can reach out to us on social media. Not too late to get to your comments. America's Forum continues right here on Newsmax TV after this short commercial break.